Praise God. God is so good. You know, when she was talking about uh, the tithe, <clears throat> there's a man, I don't know if you've ever heard of Laterno College. It's up around Longview, Gilmer area, but the man Laterno, which is considered and still is a genius in machinery. He designed machines that are still in operation today that are absolutely amazing. One of the testimonies, he was walking through the warehouse and they were needing a new design. He was a believer and they needed a new design and he stopped, just suddenly stopped. And he said, get me a chalk, piece of chalk. And they swept the floor and he sat right there and drew that machine. Just drew it. And he told them, you guard this. Don't let anybody get near this. They manufactured it and it's in use. They developed one machine my dad was telling me about, and there's a point to this, a machine that the military used in the early wars, and they would land that, they would take that machine, put it together, and when they did, it would take, they needed instant runways. That machine would uproot trees, grind them, shoot it out the back, and make runways and leveled all at the same time. And Daddy said they, my dad said they could make runways just in a heartbeat with that machine. Well, Laterno began to hear the truth about tithing. Now, remember she read where Paul said, as you purpose in your heart. You know, some people think, well, I'm just going to give the 10%. Well, you can give more if you want to. Laterno, in his heart, said, I'm going to give 90%. I'm going to outdo my best to outgive God. He said, I'm going to give 90. When he passed away, he was mega wealthy. But he gave 90% away. So you can't outgive God. But no, remember, he purposed in his heart. He didn't do it because some man told him he had to. He had a, a decision with he and God. So, and on a, the blood... Have you ever thought about it this way? Just one drop, just one drop of Jesus' blood was powerful enough to bring salvation to the whole world. And yet all of his blood is forever at the mercy seat on our behalf. Whew, we're covered. Woo, glory to God. Amen. Well, we're still talking about seated at his right hand reigning in life. That word life there is zoe. God provided some things, uh, and, and it's still true. God's provision for us is life in the absolute sense, life as God has it. Here on earth, not just when we get to heaven, but right here on earth right now. How many is glad to be finding out we can have heaven on earth? We don't have to keep putting up with the devil's stuff and the dark stuff spirits we can have heaven on earth but how many found out it's work you can't just sit at home and and eat bonbons and drink milk and and leave your take a nap with your bible in your lap never open it you have to what be a doer of the word and the, the word do is always an action word it means you're doing something so we have to do that and you say, well, pastor, you keep reading these verses, yeah, and, I, and I'll just be real honest with you. I'm going to keep reading them till the Lord tells me to quit. Because how does faith come? Let, before I get started, let me share something with you. Uh, Brother Hagen was ministering at Rhema, and he, now, now he didn't say this was law. He just said he read a study. How many knows mankind likes to do all kinds of studies? I read where one guy got a grant for $250,000 to see how long it took to fry an egg on the concrete. I thought, man, if he went to Laredo, it didn't take long. But in this study, he said it, what they were deciding is how does a truth or, or a thought or an idea get established in a person? Now, in this study... They said it takes 11 times of hearing something, whether it's right or whether it's wrong. Has anybody ever heard something that you found out later it was wrong? Well, we all have. 
So in this study, they said it didn't matter if it was a truth or a lie. If a person heard it, now, now we know, according to the word, it means you actively hear it. How many found out when you go to church, you need to engage your hearing? I'm not going to ask you if you ever uh, <laughs> snooze through church. And I don't mean fell asleep. I mean you just so distracted that you didn't hear what was said. I, I would, I've, I've been there before. So he said, when I read that, I thought, well... Okay, so if you, if you heard a lie or an untruth it, in 11 times, then it's going to take 11 times to hear the truth to really establish the right thought or the right idea. And he said, I kept reading. And he said, what they found in their study was this, that if you hear a falsehood enough times and you believe it, and you've, it took 11 times, but he said... To bring, just bring you back to zero, you had to hear the truth 11 times. It's not established. You're just back to a clean slate. And then they said it took 11 more times of hearing the truth to establish it. So now you understand why the Word says faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. And then he prefaced it. He said, by hearing the Word of God. Not man's traditions, but hearing what the Word says. So that's why, as long as the Spirit keeps leading, we're going to keep going over this till it gets well established in us. And I don't know about y'all, but uh, on Tuesday nights, the many times uh, y'all prayed that God would give us greater revelation. And I'm going to be real honest with you. The things that I'm sharing right now from the throne of God, what God's been putting in my heart, I've never heard teaching in the depth that we're having right now. I've never heard it. And it but it's in the Word. How many knows it's the Word of God? I didn't make this up. I didn't write it. So, in Ephesians chapter 2, before it's over, you'll probably be able to quote this. Ephesians chapter 2, read verse 6 and 7 out of the Amplified. And it said, He raised us up together with Him made us sit down together, giving us joint seating with Him in the heavenly sphere. By virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the Anointed One. And we could say this by being in the Word. Now, we know that Jesus is the Word of God come in the flesh. And any promise that we have in the Word, the only way it begins to be made manifest in our life is if we abide in the Word, if we're doers of it. Now, verse 7, and he did this. Now, I love this. I don't, you know, I grew up hearing that God was just waiting to zap you, squash you, smash you. If you made a mistake, you were goner. You just, lightning bolt would come down, just turn you into a pile of ashes. Well, I'm here to say I'm living proof that doesn't happen. Because I've missed it. I've missed it big. What would you do, Pastor? None of your business. It's under the blood, and God don't forget, remember it anymore. And I'm sure not going to drag it up out of the lake of forgetfulness. So, that's not true. But he says that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come the immeasurable, limitless, surpassing riches of his grace. What is grace? God's riches at Christ's expense. That's the grace he's talking about. It's immeasurable. It's unlimited. And God wants to what? Show that on you and I. That's what he wants to see developed in us and the rest of the world to see as we walk in heaven on earth. That's what God's wanting. How many wants that? I'd raise both feet, but I'll fall. I, I want it all. I, I really, my heart is when I get to heaven, I'd, I'd love to hear God say, well done, you attained everything I provided. Instead of start down a list over here, well, you had these ten, but this thousand and one over here was yours too. I'd, I'd rather, some people, I'm just going to be glad I made it. You need to come on up in your thinking. 
So he says this unmerited favor in his kindness and goodness of heart toward us in Christ Jesus. Now listen to Romans chapter 8 verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So how many wants to walk in peace? Then get spiritually minded. You know, all of us have family. And, I, and you know what? I'm not saying that anybody in here, your family raised you wrong. But in life, we, we've all had family. Some of them might not have walked with the Lord, but they may have been good moral people. They may have treated everybody good. But the truth is, we allow carnality and and, and past history and our families to try to form us or put us in a mold. And we, when we come to Christ, that mold is broke. We become new species. We become new creatures. We're not what we used to be. And so many times we try to hold on. And I'm not saying that everything, you know, some people said, well, my parents were just so stubborn, it made me stubborn. Stubbornness it can be a good thing if it's channel right. If you're stubborn enough to hold on to the Word of God and not bow to anybody, that's a good thing. But I've met people that go to meetings and one before you talk to them, they're persuaded this way in line with God's Word. They go in this meeting and they get up and share something and it's off. It's not all the gospel. When they walk out, they've already laid hold of this now. That means they're blown about by every wind of doctrine. God's looking for us to come well established in what? His Word. His Word. That we know what His Word is. How many know things of God's Word that if you went right now and you sat in a meeting and they started teaching the wrong thing, you would know that's not right? That's the way God wants us to be. We, uh, the, the filter, God's Word, the truth of His Word should be our filter. And the minute it starts this way, your spirit inside should start going, nope, that's not right. I've got to stay with this. It doesn't mean you jump up and start screaming at them. It just means that I'm not buying into this. I'm staying with it. So, God wants to show this unmerited grace and favor upon us. Now, let's look at um, Romans, eight, well, we did, Romans 8, 6. He said, the mind is enmity toward God. Now, now I'm going to read it out of the Amplified. I don't believe I got that up there, but that's okay. It says, that is because the mind of the flesh, with its carnal thoughts and purposes, is hostile. Now, what, what does hostile mean? It means it wants to fight with God. It's not subject. It says it's hostile to God. For it does not submit itself to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Now, sometimes we hear that word law, and it leaves a bad taste in our thoughts. Jesus didn't do away with the law. He came and fulfilled it. And if you're a student of the Word of God, it says when we make Jesus the Lord of our life, that His fulfillment of the law was added to our book. You know what that means? We fulfill the law. How? In Christ Jesus. That's why it says that we were made the righteousness of God in Christ. I know some, some of you sit around and heard things like me. Oh, no, I'm just no wicked worm. I'm just so wicked. I, you know, I have to sin every day because I'm, I'm a sinner. I'm not a sinner. The sin nature was crucified in me. It should be you. So what's the problem? You need your mind renewed. If you wake up in the morning with the thought, I'm just an old sinner, your mind is not renewed. It's not. Because when you renew your mind, you begin to think God's thoughts about who you are. And you don't just think them, you start saying them. 
And you'll see that in just a moment. So now let's go to... Now, now notice this. He said the carnal mind is enmity towards God. In other words, it's not subject to the Word of God. So again, I've said it many times. I really recommend this. All these messages from today go backwards. Four or five, they're all concerning this. And they will bless you. It, it's building. God's building on what He wants to get established in us and in this Word. So what is your carnal flesh subject to? Your spirit. Your born-again, recreated, new species spirit. That's what it's subject to. That's why he tells us, renew your mind. Renew the spirit of your mind. And we'll read the scriptures in a minute. But your flesh, God's not up there and going to try to make your flesh do anything. What he wants is you and I to get into his word, get strong in the spirit. What feeds your spirit? What makes our spirit strong? The Word. Jesus said, John 6, 63, which is what we have on our logo, John 6, 63, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. They are zoe. That is the only thing that feeds your spirit. Coconut pie will not feed your spirit. It will make your flesh happy. Makes little endorphins sing and dance. But the only thing, once you get born again, that will feed you and strengthen your spirit is the Word of God. Why? Because it's spirit food. It's the only thing that is. So, let's keep going. So now, notice he said, so we are to mature. Now listen, there are people in churches everywhere, and I'm not pointing anybody in this church. I believe we're all giants in the Spirit. That's my prayer and confession over all of us, including me. But there are people in churches that got saved, and, and they've, been, they've been, I'll just say it this way, they've been saved 50 years. Been saved 50 years. But they haven't matured spiritually past the second grade. Why? Because they didn't become doers of the word. They heard it. But they just want to keep doing their thing. Well, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. You know, I found out the more I mature in the spirit the more I can keep the devil at bay and keep him run off. And if he comes in and attacks, then I can counterattack with the Word of God and chop him up in little pieces to where he starts begging, turn me loose, just turn me loose. I got to get out of here. But some people are content to remain. Paul even described it. He said, listen, you should be eating meat right now. What's he talking about? Deeper depths of the Word of God. He attributed to the Word as like meat. He said, but you're not ready for meat. You still need some more milk. You know what that means? You want me to just break it down real? You're a bottle-sucking baby. You're still a baby. Now, we shouldn't get depressed. We ought to get on that bottle and get to sucking on it hard and start maturing in the Word of God so that we can move up to baloney or, or move up to a, a, a ribeye. I personally, my attitude is let's move up on to the big steaks. I'm talking about the full, rich Word of God of the f f whew, glory. Mm. Oh, glory, of the fullness of what he's called and ordained that we should walk in. Let's, let's quit staying down. Well, no, I'm just satisfied down here. Just leave me alone. Well, I'm going to love you and, and, and just keep loving you. But you know what? You ought to want to get up past stinky diapers. 
So now let's read Romans. Now, now Romans, notice Romans 8, 6 says this. But look what transpires from Romans 8, 6 down to Romans 8, 30 in the Amplified. And those whom he thus foreordained, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified, acquitted, made righteous. Who's he talking about? Me and you. He's talking about us. Man, you ought to write that one down, put it on your cabinet, and wherever your, you know, your dessert plate is or whatever, the one you open the door the most to, you ought to put that right there and read it every morning and say, that's me right there. He says, and those whom he justified, he acquitted, made righteous, putting them into right standing with who himself el shaddai elohim the god who made everything he put you in you and i in right standing with himself and that's where you are right now even if you don't recognize it even if you don't believe it right now that's where he sees you but it's up to you and I to renew our spirit of our mind so that we begin to think in line with him I don't know about y'all but I grew up in church but I can tell you this Growing up in church didn't just automatically make me think in line with God's thoughts about me. Why? Because I heard preachers get up and say this. If you had a bad thought, you're going to hell. I've heard chewing gum will send you to hell. I've heard wearing beads. Women, you can't wear pearls and beads. That'll send you to hell. My grandmother, my mother's side, she grew up hearing, you women, don't cut your hair. That's your glory. That's your glory. If you cut your hair, you can't hear from God. That woman didn't cut her hair for a long, long, long time. Why? She wanted to hear from God. And then one day, the sisters, her daughters, <laughs> Talked her in because she's, because I'm telling you, she had the, 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 not the beehive, we called it the Tower of Babel. <laughs> you know, they're like, this isn't vanity, this is glorifying God. Yeah, but that, all that Aquanet you're buying right there, that stuff stunk. And what they didn't know is if they got too close to somebody lighting a cigarette, their hair would go up like a flaming torch. That Aquanet, you take it and make a blowtorch. And <laughs> my dad said, I, when I was a kid, I sat in church. He said, I wanted a samurai sword. I wanted to cut their hair off and just set it down in the seat beside them. Because he said, every time I wanted to see, they'd do that too. And he said, I couldn't see past that. <laughs> well, my grandmother had what we call the honey bun. I mean, she could tighten that hair up, just be a, a bun up there. And I always thought, well, maybe that's wrinkle control. Because if you pull it tight enough, you know, you start doing the lift. And... But, but I remember one day, my, they taught my grandmother, see, and she did. It, it, she was in, like Paul, I'm in bet betwixt. Do I, do I depart or do I cut my hair and, and take a chance of not hearing God? She cut her hair. And she still heard from God. And the anointing still came on her during worship at church and pray. And it set her free. Set her free. So see, there's things that men will try to put you in bondage, but God wants to bring you into full liberty. Not to sin, but to have heaven on earth. Woo! Glory to God. So let's see what he says. And these whom he justified... He also glorified, raising them, and I love this, to a heavenly dignity and condition or state of being. Or we could say state of thinking. 
God is endeavoring for Living Word Fellowship, a body of believers, all the body, worldwide. But I'm here. This is where God's called and set us. If you believe He set you here, and He's wanting all of us, all of us, all of us, all of us, even those viewing, to come to this heavenly dignity or state of mind or being. What is that? i got authority to rule and reign. I've got authority to enforce heaven on earth in my life. Now, see, some people are going to say, yeah, you get that way, you just, you're, you're just weird. No, that's what the Word says, and I want to be a follower and doer of the Word. But this doesn't happen automatically. Because I dare say if you've been saved 50 years, and I have, that this should have happened a whole lot more than what it did. So it's not automatic. You can't put it on cruise control. You're the one that has to decide if I'm going to stay in God's Word, and if I'm going to hear it, and I'm going to be a doer of it. You're the one that has to decide, I'm not going to let anything of my past keep me from my future in Christ. I get so fed up with hearing, especially children, and hearing people, well, the way I'm the way I am because my mom and daddy. No, you're a liar. Amen. If you're old enough to think and act, it's your fault now. It ain't mom and daddy. It's you. You just trying to ride on something to give excuses why you're not wanting to fight the good fight of faith. Why you're not wanting to change. I want to stay right here because it's just more comfortable for me. I'm mad and I'm going to tell everybody. Well, you better get glad if you want the blessings of God to flow in your life. Because the Word teaches us that ha-ha is what brings the manifestation of our faith. And you stay mad and want to blame everybody else, you just going to end up like Adam, Adam in the garden. See what happened to him? It's her fault. Didn't work for, good for him. God still, and guess what? When God gave the charge, who did he charge? He charged Adam. Why? Because Adam was the first one he talked to when he said, you tend the garden. Now, let's just go ahead and make it real. Adam was standing, read the word right, read it right. Adam was standing there when Eve bit that fruit. At any moment, Adam, say Adam, the man. You sure it wasn't a transgender? The man, at any moment, Adam could have stepped up and said, You lying snake. You get out of this garden right now. We're going to stand and hold fast to the Word of God. And guess what? We, we'd be reading another story. At least until it came down to our house. Because every person would have got tempted sometime or another. But, okay. Do we see that? Okay, amen or oh me, it's true. So, I don't know about the rest, but I do know this. I believe you do or you would quit coming. I believe in your heart of hearts, your spirit, you want to fully occupy that seat of authority at His right hand. I believe we all do. But we have to make choices. The Word says, count all the costs, lest you begin. Some people begin, and then they get one battle, and now they're like, I, I, I tried. You can't live this trying. Are you listening? You have to make the decision, this is final authority. I'm going to live according to this. I'm not trying it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. So, now let's look at Romans Verse, chapter 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Now notice how he's 
He's given us the plan on transformation. Being transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is the... Now, now why are you going to renew your mind? You're going to prove something. It's not God proving it. You're proving it. Because you're getting a hold of His Word. Now, what? In your mind, in, in your spirit, in your heart, and we'll, we'll look at this some more in a minute and make it even clearer. In your mind, that you may prove what is that... Now, notice, what is that that is what? Good. So He's not wanting you to prove what's bad. He's wanting you to, us to prove what's good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How many wants to be in the perfect will of God? Why would, I, why would I want to do that? Because that's where all the promises and blessings are fulfilled. It's by you and I learning to abide in His perfect will. Now one thing you're going to have to crucify is you're going to have to crucify that thought that keeps popping up in your head, I'm just a sinner. Listen, I don't go around to people when I meet them and go, Hello, I'm Pastor Richard Womble. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Thank you very much. My job is to keep myself in that heavenly dignity train of thought. That's my job. Why? I've read the Word. I, do we believe what Jesus said? Do we believe what God said about us? Do we believe we're the righteousness of God in Christ? Well, I don't feel like it. It has nothing to do with your feelings. Why? We're spirit people. We're spirit beings. We're not moved by our feelings. We shouldn't be moved by our emotions. <laughs> they were given to us to enjoy this life, not rule and reign us. We are spirit beings. We are to bring our carnality under subjection to a renewed mind in God's Word that is seated at the right hand of the Most High God in Christ with all authority of rule, well able to do all things through Christ who strengthens us. That should be how we think about ourselves and start our day every morning. Well, how do you do that? You make yourself. You know, some of you... Now, I'm not talking about anybody in particular. She might look funny. Some of you are on autopilot when you get up and you head straight to the coffee machine. And you don't want anybody in between you and that machine. Because cause then the, uh, the movie Walking Dead comes out. <laughs> so, but you know what? That's the way we should be of who we are in Christ. You see, I, I, I was mistaken for years. I'd say, this should be second nature. No, it should be first nature. Why? The Spirit out-trumps and outweighs carnality. The Spirit is the one that makes the carnal flesh and its thinkings come into subjection, subjugated to what God says. And the more we embrace that, and I've noticed, Lee, I, some people think, oh, pastor don't know, he don't pay attention. Listen, I'm seeing everybody coming in here, I'm seeing marvelous changes. And you know who the greatest ones I'm seeing? Is when I look in the mirror at myself. <laughs> I'm seeing change, glory to God. Hallelujah, and I'm seeing it in you. But why? We should. We should be changing. So, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. I'm going to read it out of the Amplified. Now, you are not a, a crippled up spirit with a band-aid. You need to get a hold of this truth. See, that's why we can't go back from this. Listen, you want to know the truth? From today, you shouldn't go back and try to put yourself back under any old thought patterns or anything. Why? This is a new day. 
This is another new day in Christ. This is the day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Why? I am seated at His right hand in the heavenlies. Glory to God far above. Far above. Anything the devil may throw at me today, I'm just going to sail right on through. Why? Well, I'm, I have that heavenly dignity. I didn't say a snotty, snooty attitude. But I sh you should be expressing the attitude to the devil, you don't have nothing in me or on me. You're not allowed to sit where I'm sitting. <laughs> You're not even allowed up there. You got kicked out. Because you went stupid. You went permanently stupid. That's why he hates you. Why? Because he knows where you're seated, but he doesn't want you to walk in it. That's why he keeps trying to drag you past up. Has anybody ever in here ever been haunted by your past? We all have. But you need to get a hold of this verse. Listen to it. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any person... How many are in here persons? Any, you're any person. Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new creation. Listen... Look at this next. A new creation all together. What does that mean? Prior to that moment, when you got born again, that spirit that you used to be alienated from the Zoe life of God, the moment you made Jesus Lord, that spirit was put to, it was gone. It's eradicated. Now you are a spirit. From the moment you accepted Christ, you are a spirit infused with the zoe of God. And that zoe is so powerful, it didn't leave any of the old spirit man there. But see, we always want to go, well, you know, I've always had a struggle with this right here. It's because you haven't renewed your mind. It's not because it's in your spirit. It's because your carnal mind is still ruling and reigning in your life. And the only thing that will change it is you get into the Word of God and you start believing what He says about you. That I am not a sinner. I am a child of the Most High God. Listen, doesn't the Word say sin is not in the presence of God? Where are you seated? God's wanting these realities made real to us. Why? So that we keep rising, taking our full authority to get this harvest of the last day in. It's going to be the sons and daughters of God that know who they are, know that they rule and reign, and they know that they're God, and they're seated in a place of all possibilities. If we need to walk on water, we can walk on it. If we need to be translated, we'll be translated. Whatever we need, God's going to do it. Why? We know who we are. See, people say, oh, Pastor, you just lost your mind. I have. I got the mind of Christ. <laughs> I got the Word. Glory to God. Woo! Now look what he says. It's a new creature altogether. Now watch. The old previous... Notice, moral, which of what? It affects your carnality. Moral and, say and. Spiritual condition has passed away. Now what do you do with stuff that passes away? You bury it. So it don't start stinking. The fresh and new has come. Now, I've shared this before. I'm going to share it again. Way back there in history, if you, kill, if you murdered somebody, if you killed them. Now, see, people talk about that, you know, they try to use that, you're not supposed to kill anybody. The, the actual is, thou shalt not murder. 
if God had told the children of Israel, here's the Ten Commandments, he'd have looked at them and said, no, nope, you can't go to battle. You can only go out there with your hands and slap people. But didn't he tell them to wipe them out? He told them, he said, you kill the cattle, you kill the kids, you kill everything. They didn't do it. Guess what? They got a major thorn in the flesh. Why? They disobeyed God. Oh, Pastor, do you have to bring that up? It's in the Word. So we're new creatures. And we have to. Now listen, God already knows this. <laughs> he already believes this about us, about you. But we have to begin to believe it about ourselves. And that's not God's job. That's where we take faith by hearing it. It's provided. We embrace it. And we start living like it. Instead of getting up in the morning and look like you cow down. You know, is the devil out? Huh? Oh, hon, would you go look out the blinds? Is he in the driveway? Might be like that one, <laughs> that one woman in church, the devil went in there, and man, everybody just took off running out of the church, and that one woman just kept sitting there. She's just sitting there. And the devil went over and sat down beside her. He said, you know who I am? She said, yep. He said, why didn't you run? She said, I've been married to your brother all my life. <laughs> so... <laughs> so we're not supposed to be afraid of the devil. We need to get this heavenly dignity minded that he's terrified of us. When we wake up, hell begins to tremble. Why? Because we know who we are. And we're fixing to rock them and sock them to the hell. We're going to defeat devil at every level. But it's not God. God's not... His job is not... Remember who you are. Remember who you are. Remember who you are. Now, sometimes he will help you. But God expects you and I to mature and start acting like we believe what we say we believe. Now, now notice, but all has become fresh and new. What all? Everything. Morally, that means if you was... <laughs> if you thought you was a ladies' man... You become one woman man. If they'll have you. Why? Because your moral, has your old life, everything about it just was crucified. It's buried. So here is where the church, including me, that we all are dealing with right now, it's our maturity. Have we been diligent to mature? Now, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not asking you to judge me, and I'm not going to judge you. But when I see that people are making changes, I see it in the Spirit. I see, I see it. You know the one way, you know the number one way that I can tell when people change is what comes out of their mouth. Just like Jesus did when he was on the earth. If you notice, he waited till they said something, and then he said, no faith. Or little faith. Or great faith. So he's, he's waiting. The Holy Spirit is ever with you, but he's waiting to hear what comes out of your mouth. Is, is, is something going to come out that I can work with? Or is it that dribble from your past? Is it, are you still stuck in the twilight zone? Or have you decided to come out in the light and realize, I'm a child of the Most High God. I am special. Why? I'm part of the body of Christ. I'm just as special as everybody else around me. I am one of his own. And I'm gaining in maturity. I'm finding out I rule and reign. I'm finding out the devil is always under my feet. Unless I let him get up higher. 
What he, well, what if he gets apart? Put him back in his place. Just put him back. It's not that easy. Yes, it is. The fastest way to put your faith, how many knows you've got to be a doer of the Word? You know what the fastest way to put the Word into action for you? Open your mouth. Open your mouth and say what God says about you. The minute you do, you arrest Satan. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Then, once you get his attention, describe who you are. You know who you're fixing to jump on, boy? <laughs> Woo! The same one that was involved when you got booted out of heaven. He's in me, with me, and we know who we are. Instead of ducking down and cowering and hiding. Oh, the devil's attacking me. You need to jump up and jump on him. <laughs> my daddy used to say this. If my mama could get the devil in the corner with a broom, I believe she'd just wear him out. But nothing in the carnal will affect it. So what is the sword of the Spirit? Word, the Word, the Word, the fastest way to get your faith active is say, I am healed. I am the Son of God. I am the daughter of God. I am not living in poverty. I am blessed. I am favored. God is my favor. I'm favored with God and man. Yeah, but the devil stole. You need to figure it out and tell the devil. You stole it, now you've got to pay seven times. Amen. You need to, and, and somebody said, well, if it's not, God said you press down, shake, and gather, running over. Listen, folks, God's looking, this last day church that we are is something. It is, he said we would go from glory to glory. And the reason he said the glory of this latter house, which we're part of, is going to be greater than the former house, is because we've raised up into that heavenly dignity and state of being of who we are in him. And we're not just thinking it, we're exercising it with great joy. Great joy. I don't know if I'm helping y'all, but I sure will be helping me. Now look at Ephesians chapter 4. I'm going to read 22 through, let's see where my time is, 22 through 24. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. That does include what you say. Listen, when you get born again, one of the greatest truths that we could get in church, that's why God told Pastor Dana and I, when we, and, the, and we got a new building coming, glory to God. So that we can have the, what God told us, we can have, you know, some people, I ain't getting up earlier to come to church. Well, then stay where you are. I'm not going to sweat it. I'm going to put in what God says do. The rest is up to you. But we're going to implement Sunday school classes where you come in, different age groups. But in there, we're going to be able to teach from a very early age, you've got to watch what you say. You've got the Zoe life of God in you. Can you imagine? Where, now, now work with me right now. Work with me. Let's say you were six years old and you truly got a revelation of Zoe life at six years old. Where do you think you'd be right now? Well, pastor, see, that makes me sad. Not me. Makes me glad. Why? Because I can get in, put my foot on the gas pedal, and just be a doer all the time. Just change. Start doing. Start doing. Start doing. And accelerate my maturity in Christ. I'm not going to live with what could have been. My past is gone. Your past is gone, but your future is bright. Oh, glory to God. And God said, if we'll do that, he said, I'll restore what the canker worm and the caterpillar 
He said, I'll restore it. And God's the only one. And it's in that heavenly state of dignity at the right hand that God can turn everything what should have or could have will be, and it's in your future. And He can do it for all of us. All of us. And He is. Put off concerning the former things, conversation. The word conversation, when you're reading the word, it's not just what you say. Now listen, this is how powerful this word is. It's your actions too. You see, when God says your conversation of life, He's talking about your words and your actions should be one. That's what God means by this. So, he says, put off these former conversations. Um, okay. The old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. Now, last, last service, we looked at it here, and, and I'm just going to quote it. It's from John. 1 John chapter 2, 16, here's the, here's the lust. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. And God said that's from the devil. That's what the world is eat up with. But we've been what? We've been transformed. Now look at verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Verse 24, and that you, now notice, you're renewed where? In the spirit of your mind. You say, what does that mean? Well, in, we are a triune being. We're spirit, soul, and body. The spirit is what God breathed. And then it got born again, and now it's full of the Zoe life of God. It's a new species. Then we have a soulish realm, which is our mind, will, and intellect. The spirit man is supposed to be fed where he rules the soul man. Soul man. <laughs> Sorry. But too many times, people get born again, and they don't get in the right order, and the soul rules the spirit. So what is he saying, renew the spirit of your mind? He's saying, you get in the Word of God, you renew your spirit to that heavenly dignity or state of thought, and then from that place, your spirit is a safe guide to tell your flesh what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And not only that, but because the spirit is uno number one, that means that I control the soulish realm and I have the authority to control the healing realm in my natural body. How? Through words. What made your body in the beginning? Words. If you built it, like you do a remodel here, you get metal or wood. You do a remodel here, what do you need, Word? I'm trying to make it real simple. That's why if you talk health, you're going to walk in health. You talk sickness, guess what? You're going to have a boatload. Oh, glory to God. Not us. We're going to walk in the fullness. Now notice, verse 24, and that you put on the new man. Now what? You what? Who puts it on? We do. There's a verse where Paul, I read it and Amplified, I didn't put it in here, but Paul told him, I'm proud of you, but he said, I'm going to tell you right now, I have to crucify self every, daily. I crucify what? What does he mean? I'm crucifying the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. I do it every day. When I get up, I crucify the old man. That, that, that part is in your carnality. It's not in your spirit. Do you hear me? It's not in your spirit. We've got to learn to separate it. That's why my spirit, renewed by the Word of God, can control carnality. Well, I just can't help but cussing. You lied again. I know I had a bad mouth, but when I got around my mom and dad, I never slipped one time because I knew the outcome. Wouldn't be pretty. 
at school, I, I had a word slip and a note went home to mom and dad. <laughs> I learned you don't use that word. Because I had a lot of attention put in one area. The seat of learning. And I learned. Don't use that word. So don't tell me I can't control my words. Jesus went as far to say take every thought captive. In other words, before you even say anything. You know what? That gives you time not to say curse words. Uh oh. Yeah, but they need a piece of my mind. What they need is the mind of Christ. I'm, I'm learning. I'm growing. Now look what he says. That you put on the new man, which is after God, is created in righteousness and true holiness. That's describing us. I don't feel that way. I don't care how you feel. Learn to believe the Word. What does the Word say? There's not one of us in this room or anybody viewing that has not had battles in our thought life. Not any of us. But again, let me reiterate what Kenneth e. Hagin said, and I love it because it's true. We preach for quite a few months here that... Without declaration, there'll be no manifestation. But he made this statement, went in my spirit, and I've done, I've, I'm getting better all the time. I didn't quit if I missed it. You got, how many's learned you got to dust yourself off and just repent and keep running with God? Don't lay down there and rock, grovel in that. But he said this, a thought unspoken dies unborn. You have a thought jumps up in your head, you're stupid. Don't say it. Let it die. They know I'm not stupid. The Bible says if I lack wisdom, I ask him and he'll give it liberally to me. So I'm wise. Why? Because I'm asking God, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. I don't care if you were told all your life by parents or grandparents or other people, you're stupid, you're ugly. That's not how God describes you. And if you'll get over in here and find out how God describes you, it'll break every chain off of you. Woo! Glory to God. How do you know? I've had a lot of chains broken off of me. And that's why I can stand here today. Joshua 1.8. Many of you can quote it. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. That doesn't mean you're going to be silent. It means that's what should always come out of your mouth. What does God say? Every time a situation comes, Brother Hagen said, and he said, I trained myself. How many in here has trained yourself in some areas? Well, you can train yourself in the Word. He said, I trained myself. Every time I got a phone call, every time somebody's called and said something or, or told me something opposite of the Word, he said, the first thing I'd say is, what does God's Word say? If he can, you and I can. But do we want to? You should if you want to stay in that heavenly dignity. Is you start doing that. No matter what it is. He said, it shall not depart out of the mouth. Now notice, thou shalt meditate. That word meditate right there would have been better translated muttered. Mutter. Mutter. What are you doing? I'm muttering who I am in Jesus. I am a child of the Most High God. I'm seated at the right hand of God. I'm living far above all darkness, disease, sickness, and poverty and lack. I laugh at it. You begin to mutter the Word. And it is proven that if you study in school, if you read out loud, you retain more. That's muttering. Not mumbling. <laughs> Or grumbling, but muttering. You're saying the word. You're saying who you are. You're keeping yourself reminded. And while you're doing that, you're keeping the devil reminded. He'll think twice about attacking. Now what? Therefore, day and night. How long? How much am I? Th oh, you mean all day and all night too? Yeah. Have you ever woke up? I have. I woke up in the middle of the night, and I'm, I'm speaking the Word of God. It, 
you know, it, it'd do better to keep your mind on the Lord before you go to bed instead of watching Saturday Night Live or some stupid horror movie. People go, I have bad dreams. What'd you watch? Freddy. Not me. I got a thorough over that devil. I've even in the middle of the night, devil start trying to put a dream in me. I've, I have, I have. See, some people, you can't do that. Yes, you can. When you find out you're a spearing being, your spirit never sleeps. You, and, and I've woke up and rebuked it. You stupid thing. Get out of here. That's not coming from me. Go back to sleep. I didn't finish it. I hear some people, I couldn't wait to get back to finish that dream. Woo-hoo-hoo! I thought, you need to repent. It's all up to you and I, folks. Can we do this? Yes. Observe to do according. Now notice, day and night, that thou mayest observe to do. According to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way. It doesn't say God's going to make it. It said you will. Why? You're walking in that heavenly dignity. You're conscious of who you are. You've renewed your spirit. You know that you're a child of God and that He is out to bless you and put unlimited, surpassing riches of grace upon you. He's not trying to kill you and stop you. He's wanting to abundantly drown you in blessing and favor so that you look like His son and daughter in this earth earth that will entice others to want to know him as their father it's real hard to entice somebody if you're coming out of church going griping i'm telling you pastor kept us five minutes longer He's not like all the other churches. They have a 15-minute, 20-minute sermon. They get in, amen, get out, and they do their thing. You can't teach nothing in 20 minutes. You sit in high school an hour at nearly every classroom, and then you want to go to church. Ah, you got time? Give me five-minute sermon. You'll just end up living in hell. I know people pride themselves. We get in, I can get it in 10 minutes. You lying. You have deceived yourself. Amen. <laughs> then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Who's making their way prosperous? You and I are. Why? I know where I'm seated. Hey, you know, I've been I've been meditating. I've been muttering. <laughs> uh, glory to God, I sound like a semi with 14 turbochargers on it. Declaring the word of God over me. I can't be sick because I'm too healed. Whew. When I take snacks, I eat the children's bread, which is healing. Not only that, because I stay in the word, the Bible says his word is health to all my flesh. You ever pick the Bible up and said, hey, I'm fixing to apply some health to my flesh right here. I'm going to read it. What's it doing for you? It's making me healthy. You've lost your mind. No, I took God at his word. I've got his mind on it. He said, it's health to all my flesh. What are you reading? The bagats? <laughs> Well, Pastor, that's great. He said the word. He didn't say what chapter. He just said, read the word. It has helped all your flesh. And remember, the word says, whatever measure you meet. Do you believe that reading the word will heal your flesh? You have what you believe. Now, I'm going to close with this. Mark 11. It's one minute till 12. Mark 11, 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever... How many is there Whosoever. Whosoever sh shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he or she saith shall come to pass, they shall have whatsoever they saith. Now, the Lord 
addressed me this morning. He said, son, you tell them that's not just rebuking mountains. That's not just rebuking the devil. He said, you tell them if they'll begin to meditate, mutter, begin to declare who they are over themselves in line with my word. He said, and they'll not doubt what they say. He said, that's exactly what they'll become. I don't care what you struggle with. I don't care if it's alcohol. I don't care if it's drugs. I don't care if it's pornography. I don't care what you struggle with. This word, believe and acted on, can set you free. It can break every chain of bondage that's ever tried to hold you back. But it has to be acted on. Would you stand with me? It has to be. I don't know if I helped y'all, but I sure helped me. Because I know this. I'm seated. And I told the Lord. I said, I'm starting to see it more than I ever have. I'm telling you, I'm not the same man that came here and started this fellowship. Or worked with God. It's not mine. It's His. I'm not the same person. And I sure am glad. Why? Because I want to walk in the fullness of everything that he's provided. I want it all. So that means I had to make a decision. Number one, this is final authority. Number two, I have to be a doer of all of it, not just the parts I like. <laughs> I got to walk in love too. <laughs> and I quit saying it's hard. I started saying, I can do all things, and he instructs me to walk in love. I can walk in love. Have you missed it? Sure. I've missed it. I'm not proud of it, but I run to First John 1 night. I said, Lord, forgive me. I'm getting right back in here in the love walk. Forgive me. And then if it was somebody there in present that I, uh, did you know you can mess your love walk up and nobody else is around? I know. But if I involve somebody else, I went to them. I said, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I was wrong. I was wrong. And you know what? He instantly restored me back to right standing. What did those other people do? Don't know, but I'm free. <laughs> I'm free. Isn't it wonderful to be seated at the right hand of God? Father, we thank you that you, you, you don't withhold anything. You provide everything liberally. You want to bestow that limitless, surpass greatness of your grace, God's riches at Christ's expense all over us. Father, I didn't know how before, but I do now. I receive. I thank you. I thank you that my faith in your word you know, just, just take a moment. Let him know your heart. You don't have to do it loud and scream. But let God, it, did, it, did anything help you? I'm telling you, he's wanting us to honor where he's made us to set. Just tell him right now. Just take a few words. Thank you for seating me at your right hand. Far above. Far above everything that Satan can ever try to do, or anybody else, you have seated me far above. Thank you for giving me wisdom when I ask. You always have. Thank you that you made healing my bread. In many ways, many ways you've made healing mine. Through the laying on of hands, through declaring your word, through reading your word. Even laughing is medicine to all my flesh. Father, I thank you. Woo! That, look how much you provided we could walk in hell. If we keep laughing and we keep declaring your word and we, woo, hallelujah. Thank you. God, we couldn't have done it on our own, but thank you for seating us in that heavenly dignity, for wrapping us up in your great love. And may the full revelation become aware to us all as we continue to hear your word and be doers of it. And we'll forever give you all the glory and the honor. 
May our light shine brighter in the days to come than all of our past put together as we run after you and serve you with all of our being and heart. And we'll forever give all the glory and all the honor to the name of Jesus who made it all possible. In his wonderful name we close. Amen. Be kind to one another. Remember, we'll be back tonight. What are we going to do? We're going to go further in this than we did this morning. Hallelujah.